Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 23 of the Early Parenting Podcast. In today's episode, you get to hear the interview that I did with the wonderful Heidi Z, who is a dietitian, a mother of two, and a blogger and has the most amazing blog called Apples Under My Bed. And she also contributes recipes to ABC Life. Busy woman, right? Well, just to add to the mix, she's just published a brand new book called Nurturing Your New Life. And I'm telling you guys, this book is singing to my soul. It's the most beautiful book talking about embracing your new life as a mother. I think I'm going to be giving it to every single new mum that I meet when I'm giving them a gift because it's such a precious book to add to your book collection. So in this interview, we got a chance to talk more about the book and some of my favorite parts. Uh, Heidi was able to elaborate on all her teachings that she was able to share with us. So I hope that you enjoy today's interview. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mum. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons because, let's be honest, a toddler is probably smothering pseudo-cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to find your flowing motherhood? Let's dive in. episode is brought to you today by my free clean sleeping guide that I have on my website. You can access this baby at www.jenniferbutler.com.au. Now guys, this guide is the first step I take parents through when I'm looking to help them improve their baby or toddler's sleep. You are literally getting free access to the first pillar of my triple C approach that I use to improve baby and toddler sleep. So head on over and download yourself a copy today. jenniferbutler.com.au forward slash clean dash sleeping. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Hello, Heidi. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Jen. I'm so excited to have you on. So I was recently gifted your brand new book that has just resonated with my soul so much. We're having a bit of a chat before we started recording and I just said that this the the book that you've written is the, the ultimate gift I think that a mother could gift herself or you could gift a new mother to help to just take the pressure off and to help realize what this new journey is into motherhood. It was, it's just such a beautiful book. Do you want to tell me a little bit, first of all, before you tell me about a book, the book, I'd love for you to tell me a bit about yourself and then we can dive into a little bit about the book. Sounds good. And thank you. That's so nice to hear. Um, So I'm Heidi. I am a mother of two. My daughter is four and my son is about to turn one in a few days. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my husband and I, we live on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, Australia, and I'm a dietitian. I um, have a blog called Apples Under My Bed. I've kept that for nine years now, and wow. I am a cook. I do some recipe development for ABC Life, and now, yeah, now author. Mm. So, Look yeah, so the book, so yeah. many amazing things. <gasps> Yeah, it's um, it's all sort of snowballed, I guess. You know, as a dietitian, you're so um, food is so connected to yeah to it all. So, and I, I grew up in my parents are great cooks, and um, yeah, so it's just sort of the blog started out. I would just talk about food and recipes. I really needed another outlet, so I would stop bugging my my partner and, and brother about all the recipes I was wanting to make. And and so I just put it on the blog and yeah, people who are like-minded read it. And I guess that spurred me on to just keep talking about food and then it became about motherhood. And then, yeah, I had an agent contact me and we, um, we, you know, I worked on a book proposal and then we got a deal and started working on the book while pregnant with Walt. 
my second oh. baby. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a nice thing to have a bit of a project to to work towards. I think I know personally when I was pregnant with the boys and, and in my maternity leave, to have something to work on, a little project was a lot of fun. Like I really, I actually yeah. sort of started to build my business when I was on maternity leave with Ted, my second. Um, and like, I think oh, everyone's different, aren't they? For me, it was that brain stimulation that I needed. Mm-hmm. And I just really enjoyed that. So yeah. it would have been nice for you to chip away at that. And it was and would good. have brought you into the present of, you know, because it's your new book is so based around the journey into motherhood, how yes. relevant when you're sitting there pregnant, already got Joan running around, yep. perfect. <laughs> exactly. Once the first trimester wore off and I could pull myself off the couch and turn off law and order and put away the bag of potato chips, <laughs> I did. It was really nice to just, um, yeah, to focus on, um, it was like the ultimate nesting, I guess. I was, I was really preparing myself mentally um, for this next stage because I was taking myself right back to it and um, doing things a little bit differently this time around, like looking mm-hmm. after myself as opposed to doing things for the baby, like making a nursery. I was just focusing yes. on what I needed because I knew as a second-time mum that that was what was most important. Oh, I love that. And I think that's probably why your book has resonated so much because there's so much focus on and, and, you know, setting up for a new baby, which of course is is appropriate, but what we fail to think about is like how we are going to adjust into this journey and what we can do to help ourselves through it. And I think that's where so many mums are getting unstuck where like, and I do think that, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing because mm. and we spoke about this before coming on is that you sort of, it's not until you hit the motherhood journey that you go, oh, holy hell, did I really prepare myself enough for this? I'm not looking after me. I'm only looking after my baby or my toddler or whoever's around. And mum's first to fall to the wayside, isn't she? Like, Yeah. And we don't, mm. like, yeah. And you can hear all this stuff, but until you, as you said, until you're in it, you, hindsight's wonderful. Mm. But, but we don't grow up around, we don't see the nitty gritty of motherhood. You know, we really, you're always going to be a little bit clueless, but but these days we're really clueless, you know. We don't, yeah. I just think of the hours I spent researching prams and, and bassinets and my baby I wouldn't know. even go into them. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's the thing is like the focus becomes on the things and not mm. the the transition itself. And like it is, you know, it's a very, I, I will, I remember, you know, it's so exciting to go and, buy the cot and buy the pram mm. and go to the baby expo and look at all the cool things that you can get. And it's all yep. a part, it is all a part of the transition. And it's definitely um, not something that should be ignored, but there definitely needs to be more yes. focus on all of the other things that are going to help to really bring appreciation to the journey. And there's some things that we're going to dive into about specifically that I loved um, within the book. But before I do, would you like to tell us a little bit about the new book that you have just released? Yes. So it is about caring for yourself through the transition to motherhood. It's called Nurturing Your New Life. Um, and it talks about, you know, I, I saw, I work as a dietitian. I, I see women in the lead up to conception, those wanting to conceive, as well as those during pregnancy and after birth. So that whole sort of around that perinatal period. And um, I just see a lot of women, you know, exhausted in this stage and, um, and, you know, because it's, it is so hard, we need good nourishment, but it it can be so hard to get, you know, we're so Mm -hmm. distracted with our baby and maybe we're not as kind to ourselves as we should be, or we don't realize that we actually need more nourishment after birth, especially if you're a breastfeeding mother than you did when you were pregnant. Um, And, you know, there's all this pressure to sort of because we live in this awful diet culture that tells us we should be looking a certain way. We don't embrace, you know, body changes. So it's all this is to say that women um, generally, we're, we're, you know, we're not nourishing ourselves as we should. And we're, it's a really challenging time, you know. It's a wonderful time, but in the same breath, it is a really challenging time. And so I wanted to help women to feel better, to look after themselves, to be kinder to themselves and to tune into their needs and the needs of their baby and their partner because 
we're all so different. Every family is different. And, um, and yeah, we, we need to sort of get back in. I think a lot of the time we need to, to, to tune into what we need and um, cause mm. our needs are changing and, and we don't always tune in with as much acceptance and compassion as perhaps we could or, or that we would benefit yeah. from. Oh, absolutely. And that's, I think, what really, really resonated with me. And and recently I have sort of been really focusing a little bit more on, um, I guess, my spiritual health. And so I guess that's why all of this has been quite, has resonated with me is the the tuning in to yourself and tuning into your family's need. Like at the moment and in society today, we're just surrounded by, you know, like things like on social media and Instagram and and what they tend to do is just flood our thoughts and change our perceptions about what we actually want, you know. You get stuck in this vortex of, I don't know, what Instagram should is showing what yes. life should look like. I, I did an interview a couple of weeks ago um, and we spoke about like play and how the images that are put on social media of what play should look like is just mm. completely changing what we actually need and what our children are needing from us and it's making us all feel guilty and carrying around all that mum guilt and all of that yes. so I think yeah it's just it's a beautiful message about the whole tuning in and that's actually um, some of the parts of your book that I loved so much was your tapping into and talking about intuitive parenting do you want to tell mm. me a bit more about your thoughts around intuitive parenting yeah Intuition is really interesting to think about. It's um, like we're all pretty familiar with gut feeling. You know, I had a gut feeling this was going to happen or, you know, but so I like to think of intuition as our sort of internal guiding light, sort of telling us what the right decision is for us or what what way, you know, what, what decision is, is best for us. And it might not be an easy decision. It might be something challenging or it might, might be... Um, you know, something trivial or it could be a really big deal. But either way, we, we tend to sort of have this internal knowing, I guess. Um, and, and mothers, they say, develop a maternal intuition. Um, but, you know, it's important to know that we don't, it's not necessarily about knowing all the answers um, immediately or having this clear, shining light, this is the way, you know, mm. guiding path, always yeah. telling us the right, the right way. But it's sort of, as you said, tuning in to your body and, and often our gut can sort of tell us how we're feeling about a situation. Um, and so if if something's feeling a bit uneasy or if something's feeling, um, you know, I like to do a coin toss exercise. So if you've got two choices, you have one one side of the coin, say heads being one option and tails being another option. And I say in the book, it can be like something trivial, like ordering food from a menu, <laughs> or it can be yeah. something with a bit more weight, like choosing a kinder for your kinder center or a school or a daycare center for your, for your baby or child. So, um, you know, flipping the coin and seeing when it lands, do you feel relieved or do you feel maybe slightly disappointed? So I find that's a good way to sort of tune in and, and recognize what your body's trying to tell you. If you've got like this tightening or, if, or if something, or if you feel really relieved and relaxed, you know, just tuning into what that, recognizing what that feels like for you. And, um, but allowing yourself to make mistakes as well, because all that's going to be filed away to help. It's learning, you know, it's life, it's learning, and it's, it's going to help you feel more confident in your intuition and recognize your intuition in the future. So I think that's really important. Like I, you know, I didn't instinctively know what my daughter needed when she was crying when I was in, a new mum. Um, so it takes the time to develop and we've got to, you know, be okay with making mistakes and, um, and not chastise ourselves for making mistakes. Um, and, but, but I think intuition is really important because we are faced with so many decisions and we can so easily get so many opinions from people, but we know our babies, like we, you know, very likely know them better than anyone else. You know, maybe our partner is just as in tune, but, you know, there's something special about that maternal, that mother, mother, child bond, um, hormonally, you know, and we're just so connected. And, um, so intuition is really important and it, and, and it's important to feel good in your decisions as a parent, rather than, as you said, doing what, you know, other people are doing or what we feel we should mm -hmm. be doing. And intuition can just be a really good, useful tool. I know I certainly 
used it when making tough decisions about my daughter's care and, and I still use it to this day when if I feel like we should do something or what feels right to me. Mm, absolutely. And I love that exercise with the coin toss because we've all done it before where, or you know what I do with the menu sometimes, mm-hmm. the eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So yep. eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And again, you know that if you land on the one that you don't want and you're disappointed, <laughs> yeah. you're like, you just well, keep going. No yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, let's just rig this until I get it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But I mean, that's, that's the reality, isn't it? And that I think that you're so right in saying that. Like, I remember looking at Max when he was this little baby, and like, if I had taken some time to try and listen to what my gut was probably telling me, I probably would have been able to find out what you know what what he was looking for but I think that I was I know what I was doing I was so fixated on this damn book that I had read that told me that Max shouldn't feed until x amount of times and blah 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 which you know it's like you live and you learn because that was a huge turning point for me in my parenting journey was when I had this light bulb moment of this book can't tell me how to raise my child I need to find those answers. And and that's what why I'm here today is to try and change, you know, like let's stop reading these books and let's start tuning into our babies. Um, yes. And, you know, like it's sometimes it does. There's another part of your book um, that, that I, you know, look, there's a whole section that you dedicate, which I just absolutely adored, and it's to creating a support network. Mm. And that was, you know, it's it's you know, and I'll get you to talk more about this, but it's looking at it from such a holistic point of view, the people in your life through to the health professionals. Tell me a little bit more about your village and your support, you know, network when you had your children. Yes. I am very lucky with my um, parents. They are, I mean, they were both teachers first and then they both went on to become psychologists. So we are, we are very good at expressing our opinions and talking about our feelings. Um, so that's wonderful. But they are also just really present and um, very generous with their time. My mum gave me all the support, you know, she knew that I would need. Um, yeah. And she was there to t- clean the house. She would sometimes just come in, clean and leave and not even come upstairs. At that point, we were in a little townhouse and she would sometimes just fill the fridge and leave. Um, so I feel really, really lucky with them. I had a great first um, first postnatal period because of them. My partner was also yeah. phenomenally supportive. He um, was able to have two weeks off and then was flexible with his return. He, he went back part-time and worked from home some of the time. Um, so we sort of built back up to full-time work. Um, but then second time around, I knew what you know, I knew what the postnatal period felt like, I guess, and what my needs would be. So I, I was very much aware of, okay, um, it would be very smart. I didn't need all this support, but but what a lot of women would benefit from having in is um, you know, everyone's got different support that they will need after birth some some people are fine to go home hours after giving birth some people Mm. might give home birth at home some people might need ongoing medical support so so the medical needs are really individual but um afterwards it's it's good to think about you might need some physical therapy women's health physical Mm. therapists are incredible I didn't think about that with my first I didn't think about it with my second until I realized that I needed it. So mm-hmm. I think everyone should have pelvic floor, you know, an, an assessment and support to, if not to, to help rebuild um, or to correct an issue perhaps, but to um, avoid, you know, to help your recovery. Because mm, even absolutely. if you have a smooth birth, you know, you, it's the, mm. there's been some weakening there. So I think a physical therapist is great. Um, in addition to whatever medical support you may or may not need, then there's also um, psychological support, you know, mm. um, even if you're Definitely. not at high risk of developing a postnatal mood disorder, um, it's such a huge transition. And for you and your partner, it's, um, you know, assuming you've got a partner, it's um, it's a huge time in your life. There's such such a dip in, in decrease in um, your relationship satisfaction, you know, and you're both like very likely sleep deprived. So it's a huge transition for you both so having some sort of um counseling is so smart booking that in um a lactation consultant 
you know, depending on what type of midwife support you have, but having that booked in, um, that could be a great baby shower present, I think. Um, same with a women's health physical therapist, but somehow that's less of a romantic baby baby shower voucher no. present. <laughs> but yeah. um, some sort of support because breastfeeding can often be so challenging and early support is really key. Um, and then um, food. <laughs> so stocking yeah. a freezer, having a meal train organised or hiring, if you can, hire, um, having a meal delivery service. Um, mm-hmm. Same with cleaning, hiring cleaning if you can, or if not, having loved ones pitch in and being okay with having them help. Um, and then other mothers, you know, connecting with people who are in your life stage. And um, it's just those, I think, you know, are such important physical and mental and then practical, you know, nourishing yourself. All those types of supports are really, really key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's right. You sort of covered there like some huge physical aspects, mental aspects and practical aspects. And mm-hmm. I actually, it's um, I literally put a question out to my community on Instagram asking them what do new, need, new mums need to know? And this was literally yesterday. And it was sort of like obviously there's mums that are replying who are obviously in the thick of motherhood, whether they've got a two-year-old, whether they've got a new baby. But there were so many people who wrote back and said, ask for help or accept help. Yes. And like we are so, there's something about motherhood that we get a little bit like I've got this, like this, this need to prove it that we, we've we got this, like we're coping, we've got it all covered. Where along the line did it happen that not having to have your finger on every pulse, when did that become like this this sign of like a crown to wear of pride that I've got this? Like it's mm. literally th- this isn't the way that motherhood looked in the past. Society yeah. has changed it. It's I just, know. It, At least, and I know for me it was um like I was fine. I'm like, oh, I didn't want to put them out, you know. I'm yes. like, oh, it's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. You know, I had a great friend suggest to organise a meal train at my baby shower. It would have been a great opportunity to do that. Mm. You know, everyone could have maybe chosen a, a day of one of the weeks in the initial weeks after birth. They could have written down, yep, I'll, I'll bring a meal on this day and someone could have done, I'll bring a meal on this day. But I didn't want to put them out and I thought, oh, we'll be fine. And we were mm. fine. But this is the this is your time to be looked after and it's such a brief time and and your friends want to do that for you and Mm -hmm. yeah we were fine but we would have been even better if I didn't have to prepare dinner all those nights or if I didn't deplete our freezer stores you know that could have been saved for week you know whatever when my baby was Mm. not sleeping (laughs) hello four months you know like it's it's, it's not just that initial period yeah new mum I often prepare new mum's presents when or, or food presents, I say presents, it's always food, when their babies are a little older because it, mm-hmm. it tends to be when that adrenaline sort of wears off and maybe your partner's back at work. Yes, asking for help is so, so important and accepting help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting that you say that because there is such a focus put on the initial, I would say probably two to four weeks after giving birth. You get this influx of visitors, you get the meal offers, you know, you get all of those sorts of things and then then it's it's actually fast forward to that sort of three, four month mark when seemingly you sort of have gotten to your groove and you pass that newborn stage, you're out of the fourth trimester and you know, you theoretically are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. And then things will change again and you're hit by the change in their sleep cycles that happen in the four month sleep regression and and planning for that is pure brilliance, I think, because <laughs> it, it gives you that extra bit and and finding a way to ease your life when you hit that place when all the visitors are said and gone, you know, have come and gone. Yes. Planning and for you that feel is, like you maybe should have it a bit down pat by now, you know, you should, oh, yeah. and, and you might be a bit hard if you, you're still not fitting into your clothes or, and, and you know, you, you, yeah, you've got less support and, and yet it is so, you know, it, it's such, it should be a slow burn. Like it, you, you really need to just be gentle to yourself for so long just because, you know, certain countries force women, you know, back into the workforce at, at six weeks, you know, it doesn't mean that that's when we should be able to function. I like it's, it's, it's not the changes that happen in your body and 
neurologically and and it's just it's it's an incredible we need to just be gentle to ourselves and not rush ourselves and take our time and and I really knew that second time around I just embraced every snuggle nap and whenever Mm -hmm. I could I just sat and didn't do anything Mm -hmm. and because you know you know there's no rush yeah that's yeah and and it's absolutely true and that's actually another beautiful part within your book is both the concept of I guess mindfulness and there's a specific concept that you use the two two and two which is so simple yet so effective and mm-hmm. I also thought and I'll get you to explain a little bit more in in a little bit but it's also something that we can totally be teaching our children and I think you were taught it as a little girl weren't you tell yes. uh, tell me tell us a little bit about the two 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 concept yes my mum would do it if I was ever feeling sort of nervous before exams or something or um I don't know when she started to do it but um but it's it's awesome it's it because it's very easy to become overwhelmed with um our mama bear instincts kick in it's normal Mm -hmm. to feel a little bit anxious but then as well you know postnatal anxiety is quite common as well so you might need more support you know if your anxious thoughts are becoming really intrusive but or you know this this little exercise is just a great way to sort of bring you back into the present and help you to feel a bit more grounded and and not get carried away with um with some of those thoughts that are so easy to it's so easy to do mm, um so what gosh, what yeah. it does it's called two two and two and it requires you to just stop and notice two things in your immediate environment you can see two things you can hear and two things you can smell or touch um I think there might be another one but that's what that's what I do um yeah so it might be like I can notice I can see my coffee cup <laughs> I can see the the trees I can smell my essential oil diffuser burning I can mm. smell I can actually smell that the nappy bin needs changing <laughs> um, <laughs> I totally my life <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I can hear um my daughter in the next room and I can hear some birds and that's doing it very quickly but if you're slowing yes. down and you're just just doing it in a pre- it, it really does sort of ground you and it brings you back and it um it helps you to just sort of tune into what's going on and sort of stop some chatter that can be going on in your mind yes and that's you know um with with mental health with just general you know um looking after us our mental health there's obviously huge talk and movement about the whole concept of mindfulness. And I think that mums, like instantly, if someone said to any mum, all right, I want you to go and start being mindful, meditating for 10 minutes every day. And mum's like, okay, give me the time. Show me where I can fit that into my day. Whereas this concept's beautiful, Heidi, because it's just a moment. It's a moment. And you can capture moments many times throughout the day without it being such a difficult thing so you know like you just have done in that there's all these moments where you can grab where you can just be out with your children and whether it's an anxious moment whether it's just enjoying and making the memories um it's that lovely opportunity to just be able to go this is what I see or this is what I'm hearing of my children and I yeah I actually did it yesterday when my boys I wasn't I wasn't feeling anxious or anything I was actually just taking in the moment and it was that yeah. yeah. Yes, and that's what, because because how often are we looking at our children jumping on the trampoline, for example? But I'm watching them, but I'm thinking like supermarket shopping, like all of these things. So this is the this is the chatter that often goes on in my mind, where I'm like, Jen, just drop it, be in the moment. And so I was la- looking at the la- like listening to the boys' laughter because they were tackling each other and oh my god I thought someone was going to have their head ripped off but then also you know I was because there was actually jasmine and I was like where's that jasmine plant you know coming from I could smell you know so just it was and now that's a memory that's in there because I've actually been in the moment which was yeah I just I yes all the senses which really does help us to create these memories (laughs) see yeah well and, and like it it like I like like you've said too. It is like even a, another beautiful use of it is I talk like I, I work with families a lot around um, 
you know, breastfeeding and sleep and just toddler behavior and all of the things where, and I've actually got a podcast episode that will come out tomorrow that's all about, you know, the big feelings that we feel like frustration, overwhelm, anger, resentment when, you know, you've got a crying baby and you don't know what to do and you're at your wit's end. And this is another beautiful example where that could come into place where you're, I tell parents that if you're feeling really overwhelmed, then sometimes you actually need to take a quick breather to calm yourself before you can calm your baby or your toddler. So this is a perfect opportunity where you can just ground yourself a little bit. So that's why I, I did. Can you tell I loved it? <laughs> Listen to me go on and on. <laughs> Yeah, and like the the other, um, there was the other part in it too that I guess um, ties all of this into beautifully, which is that whole gratitude, like something that we fail to sometimes do when we get getting caught up in all the crap, all the funk that sometimes can come with parenting. When when things, you know, when you're not actually looking at at things from you know the good and the bad, we sometimes get caught in the bad. So tell me a bit about gratitude. So gratitude, a gratitude practice, I think, is beneficial no matter what life stage you're in. But with new mums, I think it can be particularly helpful because there are a lot of um, experiences that we can have that might be vastly different from what we envisaged or our ideal. So that might be in relation to birth or could be a breastfeeding struggle or whatever it is. Um And a gratitude practice can help sort of nudge us towards more positive feelings, which, you know, isn't to say that it's not okay to feel disappointed or bad. It's certainly okay to feel that. And it's important to feel those feelings as well. You know, if you're feeling that way, to to let those feelings be, yeah, and to not um, treat yourself harshly because of them, to not shame yourself. Um, But when we're, you know, ready or wanting to, to also bring in some gratitude. So noticing... um, or just taking note of the things that you're grateful for in your life. Mm. Um, and they can be really little things um, and then they can be big things, you know, so it could just be um, the sunshine that's there today mm. or it could be the mm. fact that, say, you, um, you're you feeling healthy or your body is, is feeling, you know, this way or that. Um, what, whatever it is, you know, if it's grateful for the people in your life or, you know, everyone, it'll be different every day. Um, But yeah, it can really, you know, research is really clear that gratitude practices are beneficial for our, for our wellbeing, for our mental health, and can help us just generally adopt more of a a positive outlook and and to be more optimistic. Mm, Yeah. And and that's, I've actually been physically writing down things lately that I'm grateful for just to help to you know, pull all of that in because like, you know, you sort of, you, you think that you're not taking things for granted, but then you really don't hone in on just the little things. Like Heidi and I were talking before we started recording and I was saying that I'm doing a cleanse at the moment. So you know what I'm going to be damn grateful for is on Thursday having a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Being able to have, and you know what I'm so, when my husband's having his coffee in the morning and I smell that aroma of the coffee beans, I'm just like, oh, man, you don't realise what you're grateful for until it's gone. Yes. And, and I guess that's the whole thing with gratitude too is making sure that you really are enjoying things and being grateful for it when they are happening because we savoring do tend them. to take things for granted. Yes, yeah, savouring them. Yeah. Um, and so it's 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 so lovely to be able to bring it into, as you said, this is it's relevant for every age and stage of life. But sometimes when we're getting, you know, like you'll you'll look at a day and think that you had such a terrible day because – the baby didn't sleep when you thought they were going to and, you know, then this happened. And instead of focusing on actually all the beautiful moments perhaps that you had or the good and the great the things that you're grateful for within that, you know, maybe not ideal day, you just focus on, you know, that the, the funk, as yes. I call it, like the crap to it. Yeah. And it does. It, then all of a sudden that's your perception. So it, Gratitude helps to shift the perception of one from, you know, positivity to negativity if you're not practicing it. Yes, absolutely. We do. We even do a gratitude. We try to remember every night. Often Joan reminds us we do a gratitude practice at the dinner table. So we go around and say what we're grateful for. So, um, and Joan's really sweet. She, yeah, 
it's um it's really funny what and it's really interesting what she remembers so she'll bring up something that we didn't think was a big deal or you know she says she, and she always says I'm grateful for this food and sort of gives me this mm-hmm. oh look like she's she's <laughs> she's waiting for the praise to, like she's me to nailed go, it yeah exactly yeah and it's really funny <laughs> and I try to also sometimes when she's not wanting to go to bed at night um and she and she'll sometimes say this is a terrible day I'm like, oh, bless. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we might, again, talk about the things we're grateful for. Yeah, it's, 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 it is. It's a nice practice. Yeah, I love bringing that into the children because I actually have done that with the boys and I, I'm really trying to teach, um, you know, like Max, the four-year-old, he's, he's Ted at, at two and a half, has no concept of being able to really reflect on. Although now that I say that, the other day, da- yesterday, I said to him, I said, what was the best part of your day? And Ted at two and a half, he went, um, and I thought, I didn't think he was, you know, actually going to come back. And he said, orange cake. And then Max, my the four-year-old chimed in and he said, yeah, we had orange cake at daycare for, you know, one of the little boy's birthdays. I was hey. like, oh, Ted, bless you. That's so it actually is amazing lovely. how when you start to do it, does it, you know, start it from such a, start these rituals from such, such a young age and they understand and they do, you know. And then you get these little nuggets, head. you know. You get these little I nuggets know. they share with you what brings them joy and that brings you joy and it's just, yeah, that's lovely. I know. It's absolutely beautiful. So then the final section of your book that I wanted to talk a little bit about too is the whole nourishing section. And I, one of the things I loved within it was the super delicious but super nutritious and super easy recipes for like even for the children, like just so simple. But when I looked at it, I was like, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think about putting together these food combinations? And obviously this is, Siri's talking to me right now. (laughs) (laughs) This is obviously your area of expertise. So have you got any advice that you can shed on how to create, you know, the plates, the simple plates for families that do make food nutritious and easy for us yeah well I guess I'm a big fan of using um good quality ingredients I find it's like we were lucky enough to travel throughout Italy a bit and and in um you know when the produce is in the right season and you you need to do very little to it to make it taste delicious so I always Mm. try to buy in season locally grown you know good quality produce um, including really nice olive oil and um, using nice broth I'm a big fan of using um, chicken stock or or broth um, to flavor grains um, to sort of Mm. yeah make these casseroles really flavorsome I'm not afraid of using salt I do go easy when it's with Mm. um, little ones um, but Mm -hmm. with young kiddos and babies but um that's also yeah important flavoring I find um and so yeah I I developed or I the recipes in the book are what we make and eat just in our everyday um but I really did I I saved the final recipe development and editing for when I was in my postnatal period myself so that I could be sure I was keeping it relevant and approachable and you know effective for new mums because you don't want anything too fancy um if you're the one making it especially you and you want to have meals that will give you leftovers and um that will last and um that can be frozen and and so that that was really in my mind and I wanted to use good quality ingredients because I find you have to do very little to it to make it taste delicious um and also really using lots of um delicious fats, nourishing fats, Um, oily fish I'm a big fan of, but I also I use it canned fish for a lot of it because it's convenient and you can get wild caught more easily. Um, It's much more affordable. So, um, yeah, those those are the – it's really just what we make and eat in our everyday. Um, I might do things a little bit more fancy now, but um, then 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 in – the postnatal period, but essentially they're just the recipes that we, they're our everyday recipes. Um, and, and I'm really happy that people are finding them really nourishing. Like we make that dal every week and that yeah. beef casserole is our favorite. We're, we're making that, we're going to have that with pasta for Walt's birthday on the weekend. 
Um, wow. Yeah, so it's it's just I think I think it's just good nourishing food, and I tried to put things in there that that hopefully everyone will like a, a bit of a variety. We do eat a lot of plant based foods at home, but in the postnatal period, I do eat more meat and um, and have a bit more dairy just because I find I need more easy nourishment, I guess. And, and yeah, and yeah. often those things can add more calories and, and give me some of the nutrients yeah. that my body's craving. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, it is, it's just nourishing food and it's, and it's like when I was looking through the recipes, I was like, oh, I think I forget, I forget about just easy recipes, but that are so delicious. And I, there's this tendency of overthinking what you're actually putting on the plate or just, I know personally, I just fall into this, like you just go to the old favourites, but then everyone's getting sick of them and it's really only providing one lot of food group for your body and it's not really nourishing the whole body. Um, but like as you, you were saying before, it's the salmon um, smash with the um, creme fraiche and I was like, yum, that is delicious yeah. and I don't get that oily fish into the boys because my husband isn't a fish fan but that's the perfect, like it was a perfect little recipe, quick. Yep. I love that can is okay, by the way. That yep. just <laughs> makes me so yep. happy because like especially where I'm living, it's not easy to um, to get, you know, wild-caught yeah. salmon yeah. or, you know, wild-caught, you know, all, all of the, um, all of those sorts of meats that, you know, are grass-fed, all of that. So to know that canned salmon. And you get the little bones. The edible yeah, bones. Yes. Is there a brand? Is there a brand that's best? Um, oh, look, when I when I go to the fancy um, produce stores, I there's nice imported ones there. But um, I on, honestly, which you know, I do try to buy Australian where I can. But from a taste perspective, they've been packed in oil and they're amazing. Um, mm. But I often just use you know like John West or whatever. I try to get yes. oil yeah. packed where I can or spring water for that salmon smash. I use spring water yeah. and you can get the yep. soft bones in that and um, you mash them in too. That is a brilliant calcium hit and our bodies need calcium Absolutely. Yeah, during pregnancy and, and postnatally, especially if we're breastfeeding. Yeah, mm. and so good for the kids too if they're going to tuck into it. Yes. Oh, yes, brilliant. that's a great – I well, really like that recipe. It's very easy – my uh, my kids yeah. love it too, and yeah, my husband does, and yeah. It's a hit all around. I it think is. the only person <laughs> in my house that wouldn't tackle it is my husband, but I'm desperately trying to get him on board yeah. of the enjoying fish train. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do a teriyaki salmon. I hear that's the gateway. Oh, there you go. All right, <laughs> I'm going to try it. I yeah. think that might actually be the answer because he loves teriyaki chicken. Mm -hmm. So if I just be sneaky and pop it in in salmon, mm -hmm. he won't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> oh, well, Heidi, this has been amazing. I would love for you to tell my listeners where we can find you and where we can find your book and purchase this book. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Yeah. Um, so I, my blog is applesundermybed.com. It does have a link to the Booktopia um, where you can purchase it on Booktopia, which is online, or you can get it from Dimmix, Robinsons, Leading Edge, Big W, major bookstores. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Heidi Apples, one word, Heidi Apples. Um, and that is is it yeah I think those are all yeah, the, they're, the, yeah. they're the main places That's it. oh very exciting well I'm just I'm I'm very excited there's a book out here that is written by an Australian mum who's living and breathing their current world of motherhood and I it, I I have I touched upon it at the start but I truly believe like this is would be such a wonderful gift to new to new and to second time mothers it's not it's not that a a second time mother would not benefit that because i am well into my second child and i was reading through it going yes 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 this is all things that just it would be such a beautiful refresher moving into another new postnatal period it would just yeah it's a lovely lovely book so congratulations on producing it thank you jen that's that's so lovely and thank you so much for joining me. It's been such a nice chat. Really had a really had a nice time. Thanks, Jen.
pleasure. And we'll talk to you soon. I'll link to all of the um to all of your bits and pieces in my show notes too. So everyone will be able to find you and I'll put a link to the book as well. So Brilliant. lovely having you here today, Heidi. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, can you do me a huge favor and take a screenshot of the episode and post it on your social media, post it in your mother's group group on Facebook, share it around to any friends that you think might benefit from hearing the episode. I want this podcast to reach as many ears as I can so I can try and make a difference in as many lives as I can. And I would so love for you to head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review if you're enjoying this podcast. And while you're over there, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of my episodes. If you're looking for a little bit more one-on-one support, then make sure to check out my website, www.jenniferbutler.com.au, where you can find out how we can work together closely so I can create a more personalized plan for your family so that you can overcome some of the questions, concerns, or parenting hurdles that you're facing. Motherhood is here to be enjoyed, but sometimes it takes us to get a little bit of help to learn how to understand, get to know, and support our babies so you really can love everything that motherhood has to offer. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.